Hey guys, what's going on? In this video, we're going to be working on a 2002 Baycraft. Uh, there's some delamination issues on the transom and on the floor. Uh, so we're going to be cutting the inner skin off of the transom and doing a core inspection, seeing what all we need to cut out and replace, and then possibly start the process of uh, adding some, uh, some inside knees in the boat. There's a pretty good span across from side to side where this uh, transom well has to span, so it, that could be part of the issue with the core delamination. So stick around, we're gonna tear into it and see what we have. All right, folks, so I got cut into the transom here, and as you can see right here, it's core failure probably caused from too much span on this transom, just like I was saying. It's, it's a little over six and a half feet wide, inch and a half thick, that, that's not enough thickness for that span with the weight of the motor hanging on a jack plate, the torque. So just over the years, it's it's flexed and flexed and flexed and it, it just can't take it anymore. So I'm gonna turn the camera around here. I'm gonna show you a few of the things I found here and the plan going forward with the repair and what we're gonna do a little differently than the factory. Here you can see we do have some delamination between the transom and this little interior box that's on the inside. And the reason for that is just all the flexing over the years, it, it was more than the than the tie-in or the tab mat could stand. The factory just used ounce and a half chop strand mat there. Not nearly strong enough or structural enough for, for this application. I'm probably gonna be ending up uh, coring, coring this section of the, the inside of this box and adding some structural fiberglass there. We're gonna tie in the top side with some structural fiberglass, more than likely 1708, where all this stress cracking was going on. Here's where the transom core was removed. The rest of that core surrounding that cut line is good solid core. So we're gonna cut out a piece that fits just inside of that once we get it bonded in with, with a good quality bonding putty and get it scarfed in around the edges. An entire layer of glass or a new layer of 1708 We'll go across the entire transom, tying it into these boxes again. We're going to create some knees that go from the top edge of the transom at about a 45 degree angle down to the stringer. These knees will greatly reduce the span on the transom as much as about two thirds actually and add significant stiffness going from that top corner to the top edge of that stringer. And, and they'll, they'll essentially be part of the stringer once I'm done tying them all in. That should stiffen this transom up and give him a lot more life out of the boat. So now on to the part of this boat that, that really gets under my skin about production boats. And this is, this is not a knock at Baycraft boats. So don't, please don't mistake that for what it is. Um, I was always taught if you don't have something nice to say, you probably shouldn't say it. Uh, the, again, this is not a knock at Baycraft. This is more of a knock at production companies that have to rely on the bottom dollar and produce as cheap or produce as cheaply as possible the product so that they can get it out the door and, and be profitable. So I'm going to, I'm going to share with you guys some thoughts and points on sometimes cheap isn't always affordable. So I'm going to turn the camera around now and, uh, kind of show you guys what I see that uh, honestly disgusts me uh, coming coming from from any factory from any produ producer there's there's just no call for it the bottom dollar is important yes but at the same time when you're dealing with people's lives and when you're dealing with their hard-earned money and you put something like this together it angers me. There, there's no point in it. Uh, this company may have saved a hundred dollars in materials, and twenty dollars in labor to produce this boat this way. So they didn't really save anything. It's no wonder, in my opinion, it made it through the warranty period. Let alone. Uh, the last 18 years. So that being said, I guess there's 
no real use crying over spilt milk, doesn't do any good. We're gonna go ahead and show you what I found here anyway, tell you why it happened and what we're gonna do to keep it from happening again. So here it goes, folks. Here's the, the floor. Floor's all cut out of the boat. And like I said in the beginning of the video, we were gonna be exploring this problem as well. And it also, like the transom, was a core failure. However, instead of being, being an engineering problem, this was a, a production issue or perhaps a bank account issue. I'm not 100% sure. Either way, it is the reason that his core failed. You'll notice right here on this piece, we have fiberglass on the top side. Right next to it, here's the bare core. Flip this over. bottom side of his floor. Interestingly enough, the company used a high quality product called Cusa Board, which is a fiberglass reinforced polyurethane structural core. This stuff's really good. It holds screws. It's also quite pricey. They could have actually used a cheaper core and glass both sides and more than likely never seen a failure if it was fiberglass on both sides. But because they didn't glass the bottom side, which happens to be the tension side of the load, it failed right behind the console of the boat and right uh, to the port side of the console where his buddy would constantly ride. And as they were hitting some chop and all those years of bouncing up and down, without any tension support on the bottom of this core, it collapsed. Coming up here to the front of the boat where we did remove the floor that stringer is cracked. It's cracked in three spots. The starboard stringer is the same way. These stringers weren't glassed properly to begin with. They used some woven roving, but they only used it about every 16 inches and 16 inch widths. Uh, in between the woven roving is tied in with chop strand mat that comes up to the top edge of the stringer does not wrap over the top properly. The woven wraps over the top, but they didn't do it properly. And the floor wasn't even bonded to the top of it. Let's see if I can show you here. The floor was just screwed down into the CUSA board stringers. And you can see, because there wasn't any glass on the bottom of the floor, you can actually see that groove where over the years that it, it compressed and pushed into the stringer. Had they done the top side of these stringers properly, used a good bonding putty, glassed the bottom of that floor, we wouldn't be doing this today. All right, folks, so I, th I think this is a good place to wrap this video up. Um, I just wanna be clear, I'm, I'm not really trying to badmouth bay uh, Baycraft boats here. Uh, they do build a pretty decent boat for, for what you're paying for it. And I, I don't want to make it sound like they, they really skimped on this. If I had to guess, you know, this this was actually a transition year for Baycraft. They were going out of going away from using wood for coring their hulls into composites this year. And so they, they still had a learning curve to go on. And if I had to blame anybody, it would probably be the, the material salesman, their their sales rep or their distributor for the the core that they, they purchased and put into the boat. Um Sometimes you're relying on them with their numbers um, to, to lead you in the right direction to use their products with. And sometimes that just doesn't really pan out. Uh, sometimes with newer products, you, it's again, it's a learning curve and you make mistakes. And the way to avoid mistakes in the future is to learn from your past mistakes and move forward. No use crying over spilt milk on this boat. Uh, we're gonna get the bunny suit on, we're gonna get the grinder out, get our respirator on, start grinding, and getting this thing put back together so he can enjoy it this spring. Um, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, the next, My next video is probably gonna be putting stringers in a Johnson skiff or perhaps working on my, my Excalibur design. And I just want you guys to know I appreciate you and hope you have a good day.